Today's game is a tycoon game, sort of. Developed by one guy, Cliff Harris at Posi Tech Games, he actually came from Lionhead Studios who made the Fable titles. I don't know how involved he was, I didn't dig that far into it. Anyways, this game's a little bit different. Production line comes as a bit of a surprise by how much depth there is and by how once you start looking a little bit further into it, how quickly that depth isn't there. Starting out with the graphics, production line actually looks pretty good for what it is. Remember, the entire game is made by one guy. Nothing really looks inherently bad or out of place overall, and the style actually fits the theme pretty well too. The soundtrack is also pretty good. There isn't a whole lot of it, but what's here is relatively good and fits the theme really well. It's industrious and metallic sounding, actually pretty fitting for a car management factory tycoon game. Gameplay is next. As the name implies, Production Line is a car manufacturer tycoon style game, with the main focus being on the factory side, where you actually physically build and design car production lines. Production Line is often compared to Factorio because of this. It's compared to it because of the pipelines overall, and honestly, I can see why. However, just because you did or did not like Factorio, this will not dictate your experience with the Production Line. If you like Factorio, you'll probably like this though. There's a whole bunch of different options of cars that you can make. Different types of bodies to choose from, like two-door coupes, four-door sedans or SUVs, pickup trucks. Basically, if you'd expect something to be there when it comes to body types, it's probably there. Optimizing pipelines is the bulk of what you're going to have to manage. Every part of the car has to be installed at different stations. Starting out, you get a few generic ones that perform many tasks. However, they can't really install more complicated parts. Quickly, you have to retrofit your line or maybe start it over completely to compensate for the demand for new features and parts to be installed on the car. Going from 5 or 6 stations to well over 20 in the later game, with each one having different options of what feature to add, optimizing these pipelines to make sure that the station is always working but not holding up the rest of the line, this would cause a bottleneck in the line. Later in the game, you have many features to install and you end up needing multiple of each station in some cases, because the one station just can't keep up. This even further complicates the pipeline. As you progress with features and car models, you discover quickly that you have manual control over the prices of the cars you're selling. Quickly, this becomes a balancing act of pricing the car to sell, but also pricing it to profit. Remember, you have a huge factory behind you. You have to pay for that, as well as all the employees working there. Features will dictate a perceived value of the car by a customer. If the car is too expensive, and the perceived value is too low, they're not going to buy it. If it's too cheap, and the perceived value is higher than what you're charging, that's money out the door. This is a huge deal since bankruptcy is really not far away at a lot of times. In most cases, the most expensive running cost for your factory is going to be the components to manufacture the cars. You unlock the ability to manufacture these parts in-house out of base materials. This is an extremely crucial part of balancing your pipelines of cost seeing as many cars will share the same parts across several models. This is actually accurate to how real life works. If you look at most cars, they're going to have the same like window switch, for example, across the entire product stack, even across multiple different cars in a brand. Making the parts yourself costs a fraction of what it would cost from buying from an outside source. So as long as you do this, it reduces the cost considerably to build cars, and again, Bankruptcy is never far away, so this is a pretty important step. One interesting part about being able to set the price yourself manually for cars is when you mouse over new features, it actually provides you a component cost estimated in real time depending on how you would acquire that component. Say for example, if you're manufacturing it in-house, 
it actually takes that into account and reduces what it would cost. Accurately estimating the cost of components makes optimizing your pricing pipelines much easier. And if, since you know how much in real time it costs to add this feature to a car, it's a big deal. Later on, power production becomes in-house too. It's a huge upfront cost for the power production, but only a one-time cost instead of over time. So it's more like an investment. Now, a huge problem with production line is the feedback to the player, or more specifically, the lack thereof. Sometimes your COO sends you memos telling you that you're making too many of one car, too little of another. So you're going to, like, pair up this entire $10 million factory to make one less car per hour. He's saying this like you could do something about it. You really can't. It's pretty much just waited out. If you followed this guidance, it would be extremely difficult to dial in what car to make and how many to make overall. And actually, most of the time, the information he's providing you isn't even correct. Plenty often I get the message where I'm making too many cars, but they're selling out the second they're hitting the dealership floor. Other times the car's too cheap, but we've got 20 in stock and ain't nobody buying. It's rather difficult to understand if the decisions you're making are good or bad ones. For example, I made an entire line of luxury cars with electric powertrain. I had no idea that an electric powertrain would cost as much as every other component on the car combined per hour. This ended up bankrupting my company. This isn't really a problem that it's that easy to go bankrupt, but the main problem is I had no idea it was coming. This was like 20 minutes in gameplay before I realized that it was running downhill fast and we were on a losing operation. Construction's also really expensive too. Building a new line can cost easily a million dollars, and it's so easy to way overspend on your new line just trying to optimize the pipelines that you end up just spending more money than you have. Factorio's Ghost Builder would have been a great way to mitigate this, so that way you could like plan it out. Pretty early on though, you start to unlock progression with researching. Each section of the warehouse has a little office area zone that you could place researchers in, you can unlock new production nodes or features to add to cars. You can also place design studios there to unlock new body types or cosmetic features on cars like wheels, for example. As for features on the cars, there's plenty to unlock. Basically everything that's available in a real life car can be researched and added to your cars. For example, you can unlock central locking for keyless entry or xenon headlights. Basically, if you'd expect it to be there, it will be. Other car makers also will slowly research features and over time, this will cause features to become more and more common based on their price bracket, stacking down from the most highest bracket expensive to the least expensive cars. This is actually similar to how it works in real life. You notice how a higher trim level car has more stuff on it? Competition also means that you have to price your cars accordingly as well as release new features to increase that perceived value of the car so people actually buy them. Some things become universal after a while, and if your car doesn't have a universal feature, it's a huge drawback. Now a huge issue with production line is the high levels of perceived depth that aren't there upon further inspection. Several layers from real life car manufacturing processes or dealerships are totally missing or are changed entirely. No factory by even remotely recently today's standards, or even probably up to like the 70s, are going to be manufacturing parts on site. I get it, he was trying to add a little bit of depth to your, but what would have been better is if you could like, say for example, contact somebody who makes airbags for you, Takata, and cut a better deal to buy either bulk amounts of airbags, or just, hey, I'm going to buy over this period of time, cut a nice deal, get a better price. Or maybe you could... If you're going to do the manufacture parts on sites, maybe you could become a vendor for parts while also making cars. A lot of companies do this, like say for example Sony with phones. Sure, Sony makes phones, Sony makes cameras that go on phones. Take a wild guess who uses Sony's cameras. Every single phone manufacturer. iPhones, Google phones, everything. They all use Sony sensors. Nobody uses anything but that. Production line basically just expects you to just manufacture every single thing in the same building all under one roof. This is extremely unrealistic. Production line also doesn't have trim levels. 
I don't understand why they wouldn't have this. They basically want you to clone every single car like five times and just change the name on it. It's a pretty lazy way. They really should have just let you like right click and like add a trim level and choose what options are on it. That would be cool. Production line is a bit of a mixed bag overall. On one hand, it's a pretty good tycoon game with lots of depth, allowing you to optimize your pipelines, change the cost of your cars to consumers, and create a second pipeline to reduce cost in order to maximize profits and manage this price to the customer. However, on the other hand, production line doesn't have nearly as much depth as you once perceived it to. Parts are essentially a slightly changing price randomly, but not by much, and some parts can't even be made in-house, so it's just a gated price. Late game the steel imports to just make parts becomes extremely expensive, albeit it's cheaper than the parts if made completely outside, but it's still really not that much. If Production Line 2 ever came out, I would want more control of the things in and outside the factory. More brand recognition with dealerships, sales staff, procurement teams, instead of a pretty much gated RNG or numerical value based on three or four parameters whether a customer buys it or not. Just add a little bit more layers to it. Trim levels on cars, more options on different types of the same cars, like two-door sedans or four-door pickup trucks. I say buy it because it's a decent game and it's definitely a decent game made by one person. But I don't know if I'd pay full price. $24 US feels like a lot. There's a whole lot of things missing. And even more, there's a whole lot of depth missing that maybe eventually will come, but as of this point, it hasn't. So I say buy it on sale. As always, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please feel free to leave a like or a comment on feedback, comments on the video, questions, or whatever.